should we worship? Who do you who who do you understand that you should pray to? Right now, it's just one guy. Okay. What do you look like? Okay. I know what you said. I know what the Bible said, though. I, I do want to show you that. All right, read this one. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. So my, my brother, he made a good point. Brother King, I don't want you to walk off. All right, you said we pray in the name of Jesus. And I said, the reason I pray in the name of Jesus is because had Christ not died for my sins, I wouldn't be living right now. And the Bible is going to tell you why. Read what you got. Acts, chapter 13, verse 38. Uh -huh. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, uh -huh. that through this man. What man? This man. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. Right. Read on. It's preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Had I not been forgiven for my sins, I would have been killed for idolatry. Because the Bible says that if I worship an idol, I'm worthy of death. That's right. But through this man's sacrifice, I've been forgiven for my sins. So I send my prayers up to the Most High in the name of the one who died for my sins. That's right. I don't worship the one that died for my sins. I pray to the Father. I worship him. And I pray in the name of the one that he sent to die for my sins. Read on. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Under the law of Moses, certain sins I had to be killed for. If I broke the Sabbath, I had to die for that. If I was in the midst of witchcraft, you ever seen somebody follow a horoscope? A horoscope? That's witchcraft. You got to die for that. The Bible says I suffer not a witch to live. You worship an idol. You got to die for that. There's many sins that people had to die for. You see how homosexuality is running rampant through America right now? Mm -hmm. All those homosexuals would have to be killed. But through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, they can now repent. Read that last part one more time. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. You see that? That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. That's right. Because a man came and died for our sins. Right. And through his death, we can now receive everlasting life. You understand your nationality, my brother? I understand. What's your nationality? My nationality being, I'm, I'm, black. I'm black. That's a color in the crayon box. Oh, yeah. All right. You, you, you greater than Crayola. You greater than Crayola. Right? When God created something, he didn't say, you know, hey, take this Crayola box and just pick one, and that's who you are. You greater than that. God calls you an Israelite. Yes, were, your four, were your ancestors brought to America on slave ships? Did you, did you realize that that was written in the Bible thousands of years before it ever happened? Well, if you understood that when I asked you your nationality, you wouldn't have said black. Right. I mean, well, African American. That's, that's not a real nationality either. What? That's, that's a name that they put on a group of people that God called his chosen people. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 68 real quick. I'm going to show y'all something that happened to the Israelites and the Israelites only. My sister right here, what's your name? Allison. Sister Allison? I got to go you got to go? Got to go. All right. But Sister Allison, you got five minutes, right? Sister Allison, how did our people get here to America? You just said the right answer. I don't know why you pulled it back. By boat. By boat. By boat. Do you believe in the Bible? Yes. Now, the Bible says that there's a particular people that are going to travel a particular method to a particular place. And I want you to pay close attention. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Who was the book of Deuteronomy written to, my sister? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Remember Moses led a particular group of people out of Egypt? Yes. What was the name of that group of people? Um, okay. 
the Israel. The Israelites, sister got it, ding, 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 that's sister right, got it, that's right. all praises. So the book of Deuteronomy is talking about who, my sister? The Israelites. The Israelites, okay. So not, not African Americans, right? Not, uh, not blacks, right? But it was written about the Israelites. Okay, let's see what the Bible says is going to happen to the Israelites. Read what you got. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. When the, Israel, when the Israelites were in Egypt, what condition were they in, Sister Allison? You don't remember? We're going to read it to you. We'll get Exodus 20 and 2. The Bible tells us what condition they were in. But Moses had to deliver them. So if Moses had to deliver them out of Egypt, they couldn't have been in a good condition. Right? They had to be in a bad condition. Let's see what that bad condition is called. Exodus 20 and 2. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. God brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt was the house of bondage. Sister Allison, what's another word for bondage? Give me Judah 5 and 11. Another word for bondage. Is bondage good if you're, if you're bound? No. Bondage is bad, right? Yeah. All right. I want to get another easier word for what bondage might mean. Judith, chapter 5, verse 11. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them. Listen good, Sister Alice. And dealt subtly with them. Dealt subtly with them. And brought them low. Brought them very low. Sister Allison, listen good. With laboring in brick uh -huh. and made them slaves. Made them what? Made them slaves. So bondage means that he made them what? Slaves. Slaves. So bondage is what, my sister? Slavery. Slavery. So when they were in Egypt, they were in what? Slavery. Now read Deuteronomy 28, 68 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So Sister Allison and my sister right here in the blue. When God said he would take the Israelites into Egypt again, Sister Allison, oh. God said he would take them into what again? Slavery. Slavery. Right. Slavery. Excellent, Sister Allison. But let's listen to how the Bible says the Israelites would go into slavery. Read on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. Sister Allison, how did the Israelites go into slavery? By what? Ships. With ships. Now, the people that call themselves black or African-American were brought to America by ships. And when they got here on, off of those ships, they were sold as what? Slaves. So, so who was it that was really brought to America on slave ships? Were they blacks or African-Americans? Or according to the Bible, were they something else? And that something else is called what? Israelites! Israelites. Sister, you got the spirit on you. Watch it back. Watch it back. Oh, that brother tried to run you over. Oh, he just wants you closer to the word of God. That's all it is. That's right. All right, so what you just learned, my sister, you just learned that you're greater than black. You're greater than African American. You are a princess, a daughter of Zion. And God sent you here to serve in slavery because you broke his commandments. Right. That's what you did, my sister. That's what I did. But I repented from my lifestyle of breaking God's commandments, and now I keep God's commandments. Right. So you just learned today that you are what? No, God called you an Israelite. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. Because remember, we said Deuteronomy was written to the who? Israelites. To the Israelites. And the Israelites were the ones brought into slavery by way of ship. And your people were brought into slavery by ship. Which means that your people are the what? The Israelites. The Israelites. That's it. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan and the wilderness. Now look, my sister. We broke God's commandments. Do you know what God's commandments are? Some of them. Give me one. 
Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Good. Give me another. Oh. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. That's a really good one. We should apply that more in our lives. We wouldn't have so many murders in our community. Right? Give me another one. Don't use God's name in vain. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Good. Can I have another one? Abandonment. Aban Abandonment. That's words. Adultery? Adultery. Oh, okay, okay. The A word. The A yeah, I got you. I got you. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What else you got, sis? Um, I did say it. Ab ab abomination. No abominations? Because no abominations are going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? That's right. Let's get that in Revelation 21, last verse. Revelation 21 and last verse. And then I just want to show you one abomination, then we're going to head out because it's starting to rain again. All right. There's a commandment that our sisters must return to so that they are not in the midst of abomination. Is that what I want? No abomination. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it. When it says there shall no wise enter into it, what we're talking about is the kingdom of heaven. Sister Allison, do you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Yes. You do? Okay. Now the Bible says these next things won't be able to go into the kingdom of heaven. Let's read about them real quick. Anything that defileth. So that means you can't be defiled. We don't want you to be defiled. You know how you can get defiled? By having sex with a man that's not your husband. Right. That's an example of being defiled. <laughs> All right. So, so if, if you've done that in the past, you got to repent from it and not do it anymore. Right. All right. Keep reading. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination. So the Bible says if you work in abomination, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Was there anything else there? Yes, sir. Or make it the lie. You see, was that one of the commandments you named? Thou shalt not lie. Lie, can't bear false witness. So if you lie, you can't go into the kingdom of heaven. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you got to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Now read it one more time. It was one I wanted to harp on. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, uh -huh. neither whatsoever worketh abomination. Sister Allison, I'm going to give you this one. Nothing that works abomination can go into the kingdom of heaven. I want to show you one abomination that Satan has taught the children of Israel here in America. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. That's a very easy one to fix, but you got to acknowledge and accept and repent. All right. That's what this thing is all about. It's about repentance. But you got to know what to repent from. If Sister Allison doesn't know what specifically is an abomination, how can you repent from abominations? So I'm going to show you an abomination. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So Sister Allison, God says a woman can't wear man's clothes. What, what, uh, what do all these men have on the lower half of their body? Pants. Pants, okay. Now, your grandmother, great-grandmother, what does she normally wear on the lower half of her body? Oh, when she was living, skirts and dresses. Skirts and dresses. Right. Because skirts and dresses are made for who? Women. Women. And it was commonly known for a very, 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 very long time that pants were made for who? Men. Men. Now, that's how God feels. And one thing about God is he doesn't change. Right. God doesn't adapt himself to society. If society changes and makes something normal, God says, well, what I told you was normal is what's going to stand. Read what you got. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, pants are in the Bible and they were created for men. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And what would be a woman's garment? Dresses. A dress. Okay. Now, let's see what the Bible calls a man that wears a dress or a woman that wears pants. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. My sister, my sister, my sister. And we wear pants every day. We do. Yeah. We do because we're supposed to. But you're not supposed to. God says that's cross-dressing. God says that he doesn't like that. God says that is an abomination. But what if you got a Whoa. job that don't let you work, like McDonald's? Or... Okay, okay. <laughs> now, the Lord may have mercy on you. He may have mercy on you, but he may really want you to find another job. Right. Yeah. Right? True. Right? 
I personally won't work a job that's going to require me to break God's commandments. Right. Especially a commandment that God says won't allow me to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Say that. What'd you say? What church y'all go to? Well, we don't want we don't go we don't go to church on Sunday because the Bible says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And the same people that taught our sisters to wear pants is the same one that set up Sunday worship on Sunday. But God has established a different set of rules and God has not changed his rules. All right. Give me Malachi three and six. God, God requires you to change my sister. Church doesn't require you to change. God wants you to change according to his standards. Church will allow you to make your own standards. Follow the standards of society. But do you believe in the Bible, Sister Allison? Yes. Okay, let's see what God says. Because we want God to be true and every man to be what? True. We want every man to be a liar. We're going to let God be true. God's word is true. Check this out, my sister. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 uh -huh. But I am the Lord I change not God says he does not change But if he did change what does the Bible say Therefore ye sons of Jacob Are not consumed If God changed We would have been consumed God would have killed us off God would have looked down and said all of my daughters are wearing pants To hell with the covenant that I made with the children of Israel Kill them all I'll make a covenant with somebody else. So, Sister Allison, we got to be grateful that God has not changed. But what, what must we do? Change. We are the ones that have to change. That's right. And that's what repentance is all about. Give me Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Sister Allison, I got two more scriptures for you. Then we're going to head out, okay? I know you got to go to work in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. A couple of brothers got to work at six o'clock in the morning. Got to get up at four o'clock in the morning. And we're going to head out right after this, all right? But I, I don't want you to miss this. This is very important. Two more scriptures. Read what you got. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye God there. says do what? Repent ye therefore and be converted. What's another word for converted? You just said it. <laughs> converted. Not repent. It was the easy word you just used. God requires, God doesn't change. He change. God requires us to change. Okay. So another word for convert means to change. So read it one more time. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And change your ways, Sister Allison. Read on. That your sins may be blotted out. We want your sins to be blotted out. I lived a life of sin. We all have. You lived a life of sin. All of my brothers lived life of sin. But we had to repent from our life of sin by learning what sin is. And we learn according to the Bible, sin is the breaking of God's commandments. So if you want to convert my sister, the Bible tells us what we must do in order for our sins to be blotted out. Finish that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. When the times of refreshing shall come from... Christ is coming to refresh the earth. And how is he going to refresh the earth? He's going to get rid of everybody, every woman that's wearing pants. Right. All those women have to die. Christ is going to kill everybody that's going to church on Sunday. God is going to kill everybody that's celebrating Christmas. Everybody that's celebrating birthdays. All of those people have to die because all of those things are what? Um, Sins. Sin. They go against God's laws. They go against God's laws. Yeah, Jehovah Witnesses don't celebrate holidays. But Jehovah Witnesses are in the midst of sin too. Because God did not create a religion called Jehovah Witness. Right. God did not create a religion called Seven-day Adventist. God did not create a religion called Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian. God did not create a religion called Christianity. Right. Sister Allison, God created the Israelites. He made them his chosen people by giving them his special laws. And what God requires of the Israelites is to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. And there's no religion called Israelite. All right, you got so what you got? You got songs? Uh, what is it? No, you can drop it. Give me Acts, uh, I mean, Psalms 19 and 7. Because I told my sister two, two last scriptures, all right? So Christ told us in the Bible, Acts chapter 3, verse 19, to repent and be what, my sister? Change. Right. 
It said repent and be converted. Convert. Right? And we gave you an easy word, change. That's what that requires of you. Now we're going to show you what's going to convert you from being a black woman, an African American woman, to an Israelite woman from the tribe of Judah, Sister Alice. Check this out. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect. What's perfect, Sister Allison? The, Lord of the, Lord. the law of the Lord. The law. Right? Remember you said, like, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. And then we gave you another law that says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto who? The man. Right? And we understand that pants are apparel created for men. Right? So that's just as important to God as thou shalt not steal. That's just as important to God as thou shalt not commit adultery. All right? So the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect doing what? Converting the soul. You see that, my sister? So the, the conversion that God wants you to make is not the conversion from a Pentecostal to a Baptist. You following me, my sister? He doesn't want you to convert from being a uh, seven day Adventist to a uh, Jehovah Witness that's not the conversion that he's talking about right God wants Sister Allison to convert to doing what keeping his what his, word. his, law. his law his law read on the testimony of the Lord is sure uh -huh. making wise the simple so God's testimony this book right here the testimony is the testament the Old Testament and the New Testament both given to the same group of people will make you wise. Read on. The statutes of the Lord are right. Uh -huh. Rejoicing the heart. God's statutes will cause your heart to rejoice. My children love the statutes of the Lord. The statutes of the Lord, I'll give you an example. One of God's laws is keep the Sabbath day. Right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. One of the statutes of the Sabbath is that there are other Sabbaths that need to be kept particular ways. One of them is called a new moon, where we're commanded to come together, blow up the trumpet, have a feast, and a good time. Right. That's a statute. And when we keep that statute, we rejoice. We have an excellent time. Right. My children love the new moon. They love the Passover, tabernacles, right. feast of dedication. Right. All the statutes of the Sabbath, my children love. Right. And when you become keeping God's statutes, your heart, your mind will rejoice as well because you'll know that you've returned back to your heritage. Yes. You discontinue from your heritage, Sister Allison. You used to be greater than African American. Right. You used to be greater than black. You used to be greater than that job that you got to go to bed for to make you keep looking at the clock because you're oppressed here in America. Right. God didn't create you to be a slave in this society, my sister. You're supposed to be waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get your husband ready for work. Right. To train up your children. To homeschool your children. To prepare for the Sabbath day. Not to go work for the same man that put you in slavery. Right. Was that it or not? The commandment of the Lord is pure. Uh -huh. Enlightening the eyes. God's commandments will enlighten you, my sister. All right. Now, we ain't going to hold you here. We're already here much later than we anticipated. All right, but hopefully today you learned a few things, sister. That you're not black, you're not African American, you are what? Who are we, brothers? Israelites. We are Israelites. Sister Allison, you are an Israelite princess from the tribe of Judah, I'm sure. And God requires that you as an Israelite keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Ah!